Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Liana Aaron from EmaCare. I hope everyone is doing well today and staying healthy. Um, I'm going to be doing the Q&A today, April 2nd. And um, the Q&A, so we had a few questions about the epidemiology. Um, as you probably know, I compare Israel to Switzerland for reference points so that people can understand how Israel is um, doing relative to other countries. And Switzerland happens to have almost exactly the same population as Israel, and they got um, the virus only a few days after Israel. So it's actually a pretty good equivalent, and it's a developed country with a very thought that that would be a good uh, place for us as a comparison point, and that's why I've been doing it. Um, now, Switzerland, someone asked, is, is Switzerland doing something different? Well, first of all, Switzerland started off in a much worse place than we did. They got a lot of cases very quickly, and they became an exponential, um, exponentially growing um, caseload very, very early. Um, but they then implemented all the things that Israel had implemented before they had that many cases. So that's social distancing, shutting down schools, shutting down public areas. Um, I mean, all the same things really that Israel has done, um, but they did it after Israel did. So Israel did it when we had very few cases and Switzerland did it only after there were thousands of cases. So Switzerland is basically a few weeks ahead, even though we started around the same time, they got a huge amount of cases and then the social distancing and the hygiene and all of these um, restrictions started really flattening the curve for them, which is why we're seeing that this is really working. They haven't done anything different than Israel, but they're in a really good position because even though they have a lot of people who are um, um, in the hospital in serious condition, uh, relative to their capabilities medically, they're doing very well. They have extra beds in the ICU. I mean, that's unheard of in many parts of Europe. And certainly in New York, um, a fantastic. Once they had that period of time of really strong restrictions, and they haven't let up on those restrictions, which is why they're able to keep the curve down. So we'll see what happens in the coming weeks. If they're able to really flatten that, um, well, then we might see that they'll be letting up a little bit on that uh, level of restriction, and we'll see. But it's not like they did something magical that Israel hasn't done. Um, I see that Israel's ranked ninth for treatment efficiency. What does that mean? Um, so uh, treatment efficiency, um, again, I'm not sure exactly which parameters went into that, but generally efficiency means um, that people are seen quickly that they are treated effectively um, you know, with the correct treatment and being treated well, and cost effectiveness, that they're not wasting money on unnecessary, um, and that would be efficiency in general in the healthcare arena. So Israel ranked ninth, which is really good. Um, and let's also note that they, Israel ranked number one is the most safe country for coronavirus in the world. And the top, you know, and, and being the ninth in the world is also very good. Remember Switzerland, which has an excellent healthcare system. Again, same population and all that. They're much lower on both of these scales. So we're doing really well and I'm quite happy. Um, okay, uh, next question. I was wondering if you could break down the numbers so we can see how well the restrictions are working in general, excluding places like the Nabrock, which have a separate problem and they're being treated differently, is that productive? And the answer is not really. Um, we are one country, we are one nation. And in any country, there are weaker populations, there are soft spots, there are places that um, have issues that you have to deal with. You can't just cut that off of the statistics because then you're going to have a false narrative. You're going to see the country in a way that is not good. For example, if we find out that people living in Ranana are doing really well and you say, okay, people in Ranana, you're doing really well. We're going to let you not have any restrictions anymore. 
then what's going to end up happening is the opposite. We're going to end up in a worse situation than we are now. There is no benefit to not seeing us as a whole country. Um, so uh, I don't see any benefit to that. B'nai Brock is something I am going to speak about because um, people have asked for me to do that. So B'nai Brock is basically now shut off from um, all of the neighboring areas. Um, no transportation in and out. They're very strict about it. Today, uh, 4,500 elderly uh, people in uh, B'nai B'rak were put into uh, a hotel for quarantine. Remember, we talked yesterday that B'nai B'rak is a very, um, it's a very poor area, and it's an area where people live in very tight quarters. So the physical ability for people to quarantine is almost impossible in most homes. So the government has come up with these solutions to help people quarantine uh, legally, efficiently, within the realm of the religious observance. Um, and so that's uh, really important. So um, I, I wanna add in that Israel has done things that I hope other countries copy as well which is like, we know there's no tourist industry now. All the hotels are closed. The Ministry of Defense took over. What do you mean took over? They're leasing hotels and turning them into um, places for people to either quarantine or for people who have low to moderate health needs so that the hospitals can just deal with the um, more intense patients. And by doing that and by getting the military involved, um, which let's say in America would be like getting the National Guard involved. It means you have more people who are able to take care of people and you're recruiting more staff because remember everyone's short staffed. So this was a brilliant idea because what you're doing is you're expanding uh, the, uh, the services and the physical location. Now all of a sudden you have triple the number of hospital beds that we had from a month ago. That's brilliant. Um, so, uh, and Israel, remember, had the most crowded hospital healthcare system in the developed world. You know, that's our ranking for many years. That's not a good place to be. And so what they did in this time of crisis was absolutely brilliant. You know, they took over these empty um, hotels and turned them into uh, facilities where they can treat people. And, um, and I hope other countries are able to start doing that um, and getting more beds. Um, and utilizing their uh, military or National Guard services to help provide additional services to citizens. So those are some of the things that I wanted to talk about. Um, there are other potential hotspots around the country. The Nabrock has very unique situation. In addition to that, the government is starting to do more intense um, testing in the uh, Arab sectors in East Jerusalem in some of the other ultra-Orthodox neighborhoods around the country so that they can capture more of, um, more of the people who are sick. So we've increased testing a lot. So surgical masks are the plain masks that I showed you yesterday. Uh, maybe I didn't show it to you yesterday. This is a plain surgical mask, okay? So very simple, goes over the face, goes around the ears, or it goes behind the head. Um, and they're very simple masks, um, but they do have a very basic filter that's inside the layers of paper. So it's not really paper, it's actually a woven material, but um, it does have some kind of a filter. It's not the perfect mask but it is a mask that helps reduce transmission from a sick person who may not know they're sick to somebody else. And that's a really good social benefit. Um, so that does reduce my, um, I call it my spritz, but my respiratory droplets are about 90% of them are gonna stay in the mask, which is pretty good. Um, cloth ones that you make from home vary greatly. So there have been studies done to see if cotton works, if t-shirts work, if silk works, if wool works, and you know, people are going through that. Some people fold them, some people fold them three, four times. Obviously, the more layers, um, you know, the more of a filter it would be. On average, they found that cloth masks um, 
were about 30% less effective than the paper masks. So they're less effective, but they're still a lot better than having nothing. So it's generally a very good idea to have a mask. It's now a regulation. Everyone's supposed to wear a mask when they leave their house. Um, and I support that. Now, Im very important, okay? A mask is not an excuse to get closer to somebody, to say, oh, I have a mask on, so I don't need social distancing. That's not what a mask is for. A mask is there to protect other people. So keep that in mind. Um, you know, we don't want people to wear medical masks. I've discussed this many, many times. There is no reason for it. A scarf is about the same thing as a cloth mask. So a scarf can be used. It does reduce your, uh, again, the spritz. It reduces the spritz. It depends how thick it is and how many layers. But when you have something made of cloth, you have to wash it and you have to wash it frequently um, on a hot temperature to kill the virus. So keep in mind that um, they do have to be washed. The paper ones, it's kind of a balance, okay? So get a mask, stay healthy, stay safe, and stay home. Take care.